I'm Jake Parker, and today I'm drawing this. So, uh, hey guys, how's it going? Uh, as you can see here, I am just laying down a lot of line work on the uh, on the paper here, and I've been doing this for about I don't know five or ten minutes. Um, what started out was, uh, you know, I sat down wanting to draw a really cool spaceship. I had drawn a cool spaceship a few days ago. Uh, it was sort of like a fighter jet in space. And, uh, and I really liked it and I wanted to do another one, um, to, to record it. Cause I thought that would be a fun, that would be a fun video to watch that. But, um, what happened was I could not, I just couldn't figure out like a good angle, a good, uh, approach a good design for this ship and so what I found myself doing is just scribbling <laughs> scribbling all over the page uh, and at one point I even um, in frustration just just uh, crossed off the page and turned it flipped to the next page and I thought you know what no don't give up Jake get back in there you can uh, you can find something in there if anything you can just draw some abstract shapes and add engines to them and and you'll have something and so um i went back to it and and actually after scribbling some more on there and, and just messing around with it and erasing a little bit um i felt like there was some some interesting shapes at least something to go on and so uh and so that's what i'm doing is i'm now i brought out my uh my brush pen and uh um, and I'm starting to block in some of the shapes based off of these scribble lines. And so this is kind of something you can do if you ever sort of, uh, artist block or, or drawing block, you don't know what to draw. Um, there's a game you can play with either with yourself or you, I've done it with friends too, and done it with my kids where you just draw a scribble and you try to turn it into, uh, try to turn it into something real. And, um, I make a rule for myself that the easiest, I guess the level one of that game is, is to turn it into a face. I try to make a rule of myself for myself that I won't turn it into a face because I think, I think psychologically we're, we're already drawn towards seeing faces and things where there are no faces. So it's, it's like our natural tendency to do that. And so the harder part, the next, the next level is to draw, try to draw something from your scribble that, that, um, that isn't a face, but still like a real object. Anyway, so he, here I am. The the scribbles are there, and uh, and I'm seeing some some spaceships in here. Um, and and what I'm doing is, I like to leave a lot. And I, I've said this in other videos, but I like to leave a lot of the exploration to just the uh, just using the pen. Um, uh, I, there's a thing. I like to call the uh, your creative bank account. Um, it's also, I think we have these libraries built up in our heads. And if you've drawn something a lot, or if you've looked at things a lot, um, you you're able to. You're almost um, um, you're almost predisposed to to be able to draw these things. And so for me, I've always loved machinery and how machines work and how they look. And, uh, and I've, I've gathered a lot of reference on machinery and I've, you know, taken things apart and I've opened up hoods and looked inside and I've built up this library in my head of machine shapes and how pieces fit together and how, um, parts work and what they're used for. And, uh, and for a long time, if I sat down to, to draw a, a machine, a robot or a tank or some sort of, uh, spacecraft I would lay out my reference and oh, I want to pull this piece here and I put want to put this piece here and see if I can oh that's a really nice uh, looking vent I want to put that vent there and after a while you just you get enough of these uh, these pieces in your head and you don't have to pull out the reference anymore you can just do it and if you've ever seen those artists that they can just draw a human like the human figure in a, in a pose the, the person's not posing in front of them but they could still put you know, manipulate that character into pose. It's because um, they've got all those, they've, they've got that library of body parts and muscle 
shapes and how the the body fits together they can they can figure it out on the page how that works and and that's i think the ideal thing that you want to work towards is to is to building up that that library in your head now i said creative bank account and and that's one way to look at it is you you know if you want to buy something and you go crack you know bust open your piggy bank and if there's um five dollars in there then you can go buy something that's worth five dollars if you had been putting quarter after quarter dollar after dollar into your bank and you want to go buy you know make a big purchase then you've got to make sure you have enough funds in there to uh to pay for that and i think it's the same way with uh with our creativity is you constantly have to be filling your 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 bank account with with ideas with uh, reference with experiences so that when you're called upon or, or you're calling upon your, your creativity to, to create something, whether it's a, a story or a character or um, a, an environment or, or a comic, that you have enough creative capital there that you could spend and, and, uh, and, and actually make something unique and, and something beautiful. Um, I think a lot of times, you know, when you come up and you get to that point and there's just nothing there, you have no ideas, it's because you've spent you spend all your, your, your creativity. And so I like to look at it at, at, as taking time to fill that bank account. And it might be what you read. It might be what you, what you watch. Um, it might be uh, um, something you do, a hobby or, or experiences you have with, with other people. All those kinds of things can fill, fill that a, a bank account. And then you have it there when you need it. And so for me, I can bust out these spaceships because I've filled my account with spaceship ideas, right? I've, I've looked at lots of machinery. I've drawn lots of machinery before. And so this sort of comes almost uh, naturally at this point. Um, and, and that's something I think every artist should, should strive for. One thing with this um, drawing has got me thinking about is um you know watching <clears throat> how it really unfolded how there was this this phase of of uh uncertainty not knowing what i'm doing just sticking with it until i found what the thing i was supposed to do with uh for the drawing is i actually can't help but think like how that mirrors my life right now so i feel like this past year the past couple of years there's been a lot of scribbling until I find something with my career and uh, um, I, I take on projects I try projects out and I I've been accused and I admit that I have um, a little bit of uh, creative ADD so what happens is I'll, I'll find a project or a story or a comic or something I really want to do and and then I'll go and, and, and start messing around with it and doing it and, and building it. And then it gets, I get either lost or it gets boring or something. And, and then my mind will drift or, or my desires will drift to that next thing that looks really interesting and, and fun. And so I'll shift gears and go do that thing. And all the while, um, uh, maybe abandoning or forgetting about the first thing I was on. And I find myself doing that and it's frustrating because I just want to finish things and have things done and out there and, and say, you know, point to that and look, I did that. I finished that. I made that. Um, and so I, uh, I've been frustrated about this. I actually talking to a friend of mine and he, he pointed out, he's like, okay, Jake, yeah, you say you have creative ADD. And he's like, to be honest, like everyone has that. They, they, they want to, uh, it's hard to stick with one project, you know, during the hard times you have to like, you have to work through that and pass through that. Everyone deals with that. But he said that the thing is you, you do have a track record. You have things you've finished. You've done graphic novels. You've done children's books. You've done, um, uh, Kickstarters and you fulfilled those, you know, those obligations. He says, I don't feel like like uh you're not a person who doesn't finish things and and he made a point he made a good point and it's, it's fair there are things that i've finished but i feel like at, at this time 
I'm in this phase where I'm scribbling until I find something. And I think that's okay. Um, uh, you know, had I started this drive, had I gone with the first um, uh, sketches I'd laid down on this drawing, I don't know that it would have been a good drawing. But I would have said, hey, I finished that drawing. It's a bad drawing, but I stuck with it. And I finished it. And I feel like, um, I feel like you got to, you kind of got to do that with your big projects too, is you do a little bit of scribbling, you feel it out. Do I like this? Is this the thing I want to work on? And, and if you're starting to feel it, um, you find that thing, then you go and you finish that thing. And, um, and so I, I, I feel like that's something I've done with, um, um, with a few of my projects this last year. So last year I started uh, skull chaser and, and then um, some things happened. I got a job with Marvel doing Rocket Raccoon. Uh, Inktober came up, and, and I thought, okay, I'll try uh, doing an, a story for Inktober. So I did um, Lord Balderbin and the, the Cybercorn stuff. And, and I feel like all of that was a, a version of, of scribbling. Um, I have finished things to a degree, but they're not all like, finish to a level of, um, uh, to a degree where I can point at it and say, look, look at this thing. It's, it's finished. It's tight. It's in a box. You can hold it. Uh, they still feel like, like they're, they're works in progress. So what do I do from here? Um, and that, that's a good question. I feel like if promises have been made, then promises need to be kept. So I think with Balder Ben, no real promise was made there. It was like, hey, here's the story. It's part one of a story. Um, I'll finish the rest of it when I when I can. But really, this is just my thing that I was doing during October. It'd be cool to collect it. Uh, it'd be cool to print it and make a book for it. But do I want to make a book that's only part one? You know, I think I want to finish that Balder Ben story and put out a book that's part one, part two, and part three. Uh, I, I think that's I think that's important there. But I haven't made that promise yet. I've sort of started it. I've thrown it out there. Um, and I'll work on it when I can. Now, I feel like I have made a prom promise with uh, Skull Chaser. So my plan is to, to um, as soon as I'm in a good spot with uh, my obligations with Marvel and Rocket Raccoon to uh, to be able to start putting out pages for Skull Chaser and to have that um, have that continue going on. Um, and I guess back to this this drawing that I'm doing here. Um, so this these two spaceships are over actually three spaceships here. They're all kind of overlapping. Uh, and so what I'm doing is I'm just adding red to uh, separate separate the two ships to bring that one ship forward and to knock back the uh, the other ship and you can see there um on the top part of that ship I, I there's some some correction tape that i laid down i just felt like some of the lines there were too thick and were reading too heavy so um i just taped them down and then inked over the top and you can see um the ink's still wet and what i'll do is i'll press it with my finger and you can see it coming off of my finger there and what that does is it actually helps dry it a little bit. It gets the wet stuff off so that when I can go in with the pencil or with marker or anything, uh, I'm not smearing um, I'm not smearing the ink as bad as, uh, as if it was still really wet. It's still not perfectly dry, so I'm going to kind of avoid that area. But, um, you know, give it a few minutes and it'll, it'll dry if you ever use the, uh, the correctional tape. And that stuff's just um, kind of like... Uh, I don't know, whatever you'd get at a office supply store. That's what I used. Um, this is looking good, but I think yeah, I'm going to add some marker, just some gray tones to all the, the little mechanical bits. Um, so I'm going to go in and do that. And uh, people ask what tools I use, what pencils, what, what markers. This is a, a Copic marker, um, and it's like a, a, a cool gray number three, I think. Uh, the, the pencil that I use to, to scribble in and to kind of shade the background there is just a color race. It's orange uh, color race. I'll, I'll use a vermilion or I'll use an orange. And um, uh, I don't know, I just, I just like the color. 
Okay, probably time to wrap up this video, getting to the end of this drawing here. But um, I just want to reiterate some of the things that I talked about here. Um, if you're dealing with creative ADD, uh, I think that's fine to a degree. Like, I think it's okay to to be scribbling a little bit, whether it's scribbling in your in your um, creative process or it's scribbling in the project you're working on or even scribbling in your career or life. Um, the fact that you're scribbling, that you're still putting pencil down to paper means that you're doing something and that you're going to find something. And, and that's the really important part. I, I think it's okay to scribble so long as you do find something. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. Thanks to all the new subscribers and to everyone who's been leaving comments and sharing my videos. You guys are awesome. If you want to see me draw something in particular, let me know in the comments. If you have any questions about anything, uh, about having a career in art, about comics, about drawing, anything, just uh, put it in the comments and I will try to get to it. Thanks. Bye.